We did it by the business. We did it by cuts. There was no more kicking the can down the road. When we started July 1st, 10 days ago, we're at zero. Now, this still, this is still, this presumption is still that the last couple of unions will come on board. Okay? That needs to happen. If it doesn't happen, then we have to cut somewhere else, or we have to let more people go. Okay? We, we have a certain amount of money. I had organization after organization after organization come into my office. Please don't cut me, please. And they showed me why they shouldn't be cut. I said, I agree entirely. What do you suggest? They all knew they didn't want to cut. I knew we had 220 million more expenses than income. Nobody wanted to be cut. <laughs> the feds print money. The states give cities and counties prisoners with, with no money. Okay, we're at the bottom of the food chain. Okay, we have nowhere to turn. So that was the process that, that we went through. But I am very, very happy to say that that ship of 10 years of going out and increasing deficits and solving the problem by kicking the can down the road and using one-time funds stopped this year under my first year of lunch. Okay? And I'm very proud of that, and I know this group is <laughs> I've got a six-person staff, and for the 14th year in a row, District 1, we each have an office. My office is District 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For the 14th year in a row, I'm engaged in it for 14 years, now I'm in the 15th year, we are going to return money to the general fund. Our budget is about $1,050,000. We're going to be giving back about $150,000. That means, see, we have a budget. My chief of staff is responsible. We hire people. We buy photocopy paper. Okay? We all these different things. We buy staplers. That comes out of our fund. We get a budget each year. If I hire somebody, if I want to hire more people, if I want to pay somebody more, whatever, that's our decision. That's our budget. Just like all each of you do with your companies and with your families. Okay? And we did that year after year. Don, my predecessor, always gave money back. This year, we're going to be giving back about 150. That's like 15 percent. And I think I'm within four or five percent. I think that's as much as all the others combined. So I'm very, very proud of it. I have a newsletter that comes out once a month. Um, please just Google my name. I go to the county website, and uh, you'll see. Get the newsletter. And what we put out there is what's really happening, and more than maybe just the blip you might read here and there. Um, for instance, in the newspapers, I've been on the one on a 4 1 vote one time. And in San Jose Mercury, the headline was Lone Republican Votes Against Plastic Bag Ban. <laughs> well, just, just for the record, okay, it wasn't a plastic bag ban, it was a single use bag ban, plastic and paper. I have issues with plastic, okay, as far as it floating and not decomposing and all the rest. And I suggested let's address plastic separately from paper. But when I learned that merchants were not able to give away 100% recyclable paper bags to their customers for free, when I learned, now remember, county laws only apply to businesses in the county, or homeowners. Here was this law that we were, they'd been working on for two years. How many businesses do you think this law applied to? 55. 55. You remember the McDonald's thing? Yeah. Happy Meals? Made the market headlines in front of it? Hi, McDonald's. <laughs> in all 15 cities. Because a lot of only apply to businesses that are in the unincorporated area. So 55 businesses were affected by this bag game. 30, more than half of them, were in my district. So I called up the Morgan Hill and Gilroy Chamber of Commerce. They represent the businesses that were in my district that were affected by the ban, proposed ban. I said, how do you guys feel about this? They were both opposed to it. Santa Clara Valley Wine Growers, that represents the wineries there, was opposed to it. I saw it, I had, I had a number of issues with it. For instance, it was being done to control the waste in our landfills. 1% of the waste in our landfills is bags. I suggested, silly me, that we address the 
<laughs> I asked the recyclers, what are the 99%? Construction debris, mattresses, carpet remnants. Paper and plastic bags together make up 0.7, 1%. I said, let's go after the 99%. No, I didn't want to do that. I said, okay, let's go after the plastic. I said, why are we doing this law? So that we can all have the same law throughout Santa Clara County. So wherever somebody goes, they know what the bag rule is and the people that make the bags. I said, okay, who's got a law? San Jose has a law. Palo Alto has a law. 10 to 1, by the way. 10 to 1, you were the one. 4 to 1, I was the one. Okay. <laughs> what they wanted to do was they wanted to have one law that applied to all the cities in Santa Clara County. I said, okay. So San Jose and Palo Alto have the same law? No. I said, what's Palo Alto's law? They were going to ban plastic bags at grocery stores only. I said, they can still get out paper? Yep. I said, okay, I'm in favor of that. Let's do that. No, 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 no. So we made up our own. So the county has a law, and San Jose has a law, and Palo Alto has a law. And they're all different. Okay? And they address less than 1% of the problem. So I'm thinking, why don't we just, when we pull this stuff out of the creeks, look at the names on the bags? <laughs> See who the culprits are. Okay? You might guess what industry those bags might come from. So I'm thinking, then I find out on the endorsements. The fast food industry is endorsing this bag ban. I said, what? I'm not going to name particular hamburger joints or anything, but why would the fast food industry endorse this bag ban? Anybody know why? Yeah. They're exempt. Okay? And I go, okay. Grocery stores. The grocery industry was now endorsing this bag ban. You know why? You go there now, they say paper or plastic, they give you a bag. It's part of their cost of doing business, their supplies. Now with the new bag man, if they give you a bag, you give them a quarter. It's a revenue producer. So anyway, that's I'm getting off the tangent now. I see I've got some questions. I don't know where I am time wise. Should we move on? Move on. Thank you very much for letting me tell you. Short, we're cutting costs, we're reducing the size of government, being much more fiscally conservative and responsible with as minimal effects as we can on services. And the state of California still has to balance its budget, and when they do, the county will have to cut another 15 to 40 million dollars. Mike, uh, Jack Mallory, and my question is what are the uh, political drivers in this county? Is it the, are, is it the unions? Is it special interests? What what do you feel is, is really driving the county? Um, interesting question. There's there's the CPOs, community-based organizations, there's the nonprofits, there's certainly the un the unions. It's not necessarily who's the loudest. You know, we we had unions must give people, they had electronic microphones, they were calling us prostitutes. They filled, they brought in a thousand people. Another group came forward, had what they had to say. Those are all people who are yelling and screaming the loudest. But from my perspective, as far as who drives county government, I can speak for county, speak for the city. If I had two votes, we make the law. So I have people come in and say, please don't cut us, please don't cut us. I say, fine, what should I do? They throw up their hands. I've got other groups that come in and say, please don't cut us, please don't cut us. And I say, okay, what should we do? And they go, here's our suggestions. Okay? And we took some of those suggestions and implemented them, ran them by our financial analysts, and we did that. But what you do, what you hear in the newspaper is not always right. What, uh, what doesn't appear in the newspaper is, is plentiful. Um, at the end of the day, it's your elected officials, your policymakers. With Pete gets five people to agree with him, if I get two people to agree with me, we can change everything from, from speed signs to, to, to everything. All of the laws that you don't like, elected officials make. Elected officials got you into the mess, got us into the mess that we're into, and elected officials can get us out. And at the end of the day, no matter if it's a union representing 5,000, or a union most recently representing 150, I meet with each of them for 30 minutes, I listen to them, and then I say, what do you suggest, and see what we can work on. But I'm not beholden to any 
anybody. I had it in my campaign. We spent four hundred thousand dollars. I put a hundred thousand dollars in. I had a thousand other people who contributed three hundred thousand dollars. Some people go, well, I paid you a hundred bucks. You got to do what I want. <laughs> I go, who do I make the check out to? Okay, and give it back. So we're not beholden to anybody, and we do not respond. I know I don't. I know, I know Pete doesn't. He's his own man. We don't respond if he sends the most emails or yells the most. Pete and I, I believe each of us has common sense, reasonableness, and is fiscally conservative. And, and we're helping to make a change. And, and that's what's taking place. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. You were 10 to 1, huh, Pete? Uh, Mark Trout, former candidate for City Council District 9. And uh, you, are, sir, are my favorite uh, supervisor. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And Thank you're you. my favorite city councilman. Thank you. You know, in the debate, I uh, brought up an issue in regards to the assassination of Senator Nancy Schaefer in Georgia. Remember, we talked about that at your house a little bit. I know you've got 300 emails. That's a tremendous amount of response, you know, business to do. But we, we have to look into this. Uh, it's clearly a, you know, you can all Google Nancy Schaefer exposes the evil Goldike CBS, or if that's too long, Nancy Schaefer exposes the evil CPS, it'll pop up. And uh, what's happening, evidently, was she was assassinated by the Child Protective Services because she was proposing legislation to dissolve the entire Child Protective Services because she found out that they're full of pedophiles, they're molesting children, and they're making porno movies out of them. Can you believe that? And Barbara Simpson, bless her heart, talked about this. I hope Brian will. It's a huge story. And what I don't know what we can do. I tried to go to the state senator, Jim Beal. He didn't want to hear it. But Nancy Schaefer said that it's a huge problem. It's in all 50 states. I've spoken to people, many people here, and they've assured me it's not taking place in, in California. And I hope that they're correct. But I'd like your, your thoughts on that. Sure, very, very quickly. So I want to get to everybody here as we're wrapping up. The, the state, my big issue right now is the state is releasing 30,000 prisoners, and they're all various degrees of offenses, of violence. I mean, who's, who's to say a person that holds up a 7-Eleven with a gun should be out on the street, but a man that hits his wife should not, or vice versa, okay? We're going to have, some people are going to be able to go into Elwood, others are going to be released on probation, and we're going to have concerns and issues. And what they do in their own privacy or with whatever, we don't have any idea. And I, I think there's going to be a lot of um, unpleasant surprises for forthcoming. Um, I believe 99% of people are good, but those 1% of the people can just make you sick. And um, I understand what you're saying. Many people are passionate about very various issues, and things like that are going on everywhere. They really are. Yeah.